Hello, everybody, and welcome to the fifth Tech with Tim Code Jam project showcase. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some awesome programming projects and announcing the winner of the fifth Tech with Tim Code Jam, as well as the run up third place and a few other prizes that we have for this Code Jam. If you want to learn more about the Code Jam and what it is, make sure you join the Discord server. There will be a link in the description. But a quick summary is about every two months in my Discord server, we run this competition. It's called Code Jam. We also call it Timathon, kind of combining Tim and Hackathon together. And participants have about a month to actually work in teams of up to six people to create some type of project based on a theme and then submit that project. At the end, all of those submissions were graded or judged. We had a judging panel, which is kind of some volunteers from the Discord server. I'm going to be showing you in this video the top five projects, then selecting the three winning teams, as well as showing you the two best projects that were hosted on Replit, which is the sponsor of this code gen. So for this code jam, we teamed up with Replit. Some of you probably know them. They're an awesome company, super dedicated to helping the programming community and well, an awesome place to work on code and to actually host projects. So you can see brought to you by Replit. I'll go over to the website here. You can see you can code, create and learn together on Replit. It is a free collaborative in browser IDE. I've actually done some tutorials using Replit in the past. I know the Replit team, just really great guys and a great team in general. And while it has a lot of awesome features on this platform. So if you're on mobile, if you just don't want to set up a development environment on your own, you can use Replit completely for free. And actually all of the participants that were in the top five and in the top two Replit projects are going to be getting free Replit hacker plans, which is kind of like an upgraded plan that allows you to do more stuff on Replit. Anyways, check them out from the link in the description. Seriously, a great company and super happy that they were able to work with us for this code jam. Last thing I'll mention here is that you can actually host websites and projects with Replit. So that was kind of another category we added to this code jam. The top two projects that were hosted using Replit are going to be getting a prize as well. They'll also be getting those hacker plans. Sweet. So thanks again to Replit. Now what I'm going to do is just talk to you about the theme of this code jam and then I'm going to show you all of the projects. So the theme here was exploration. You guys can kind of read through this doc if you want, but pretty much anything that fits the theme exploration was you know valid to be submitted. And then if we're looking at the criteria here for judging all of these projects, we see they're judged on theme, functionality, code and intuitiveness. Now you can read more at this link. All of this stuff I'll leave in the description in case you guys are curious. And then if you scroll down here, you can see all of the different teams and then you can view their submissions. So without further ado, let me go ahead and dive in here and show you the top five projects and then the top two projects hosted on Replit. All right, so I've got the first project in front of me. I will remind you that all of these projects were judged by a judging panel and then the amount of points they got was the average of what all of the judges gave them. So I'm showing you the projects in the order of highest points to lowest points. So this project had the most amount of points uh, as you know decided by the judges. All right, so this first project is called Solario or Solar IO. It is by Zen Yu Liang, who has uh, competed in a few other coding competitions as well. Nice to see you back here. So let's go ahead and check it out and see what this project is about. All right, so immediately looks quite nice. I like the UI. It says explore the space, discover the beyond. All right, let's press explore. Our solar system, the world solar came from the Latin word soul, which means sun. Nice, nice. I'm not going to read all of that. Let's see what learn more does. Oh, this is kind of cool. Sun, a star located at the center of the solar system gives me a definition. Let's have a look at the simulation here. Wow. OK, that's cool. I love when you guys do these kind of an animations and simulations and stuff. It always looks really cool. Uh, nice. OK, can I click on a specific planet or something? Uh, oh, it highlights the ring that this planet is, is in. OK, that's kind of neat. Let's go back. Let's see. Can I press on these? Oh, that's cool. Let's let's go Earth simulation. OK, it just shows me the same simulation. Nice. Very cool. Let's go planets. OK, that's what that is. Let's go do games. Uh, FPS is zero. Um, oh, there we go. Press space to start. Uh, this is kind of cool. OK, how do I move here? Oh, the arrow keys move me around. OK, my only complaint is that it doesn't. Oh, I can't hold the arrow keys. It just kind of laggy and I guess I'm trying to avoid the asteroids here. OK, that's neat. Nice. Oh, wow. OK, this guy's following me around. OK, interesting game. I'm not going to play through the entire thing because I don't know how long that is. Uh, let's go to news here. News about space. Learn more. 
Okay, this just brings me to another website uh, that has space news, but that is cool. Space.com, nice. And contact, okay, I guess I could send an email to them if I want. I don't think I'm missing anything. I mean, this is the explore page. Explore now brings me to this. Yeah, okay, I think that is it. All right, nice. Overall, really clean, cool project. I love the idea here. Exploration was obviously the theme. This is very explorative. It's giving me a lot of cool information. And I like the fact that you have a lot of different kind of unique things in here. You have games, you have planets, everything looks clean. Very good job on this project. All right, so project number two is in front of me here. This is called Book Explore, a place to enjoy books, I guess to explore books. Very nice. And if we look here, we see four contributors. I'm not going to read the names, uh, but you guys can have a look at them right there. And let's go ahead and head over to the website, bookexplore.tech. All right, so it looks like I need to sign in here, so I will do that. But first, let's just look at the home page, a platform for you to explore books with your friends, experience a whole new world of books all in your browser. Get started now. All right, so it brings me to this page right here. It looks like you don't have any activity to show. Try searching for books or following users on our explore page. Okay, let's go to explore, search for a book. Uh, let's go how to win friends and let's see if that shows me the one that I'm looking for how to win friends and influence people nice let's click on that let's go preview okay oh and that actually brings me to the page where I guess I could preview that book nice let's go back here and let's have a look at what else I can do I can read the I guess blurb of the book I can look at reviews or I can write a review, I guess, for this book. Very nice. Uh, and then it shows me all this other information, which is cool. Okay, published, publisher, page count, language. Very nice. Okay, let's go back to explore. I guess, oh, now it has recommendations for me. That's kind of cool. Only show books which are available for download. Sure, we can do that. Uh, let's search another one that I like. Happiness add advantage. Okay. Uh, nice. Happiness advantage. That's another one that I read that was good. Read online. Oh, cool. It actually shows the PDF right here. I can just read the book. I guess I didn't need to buy it. <laughs> nice. Okay. Let's go back to dashboard. It shows me the ones that I've read and then I can click on that. Let's go back to dashboard here. Uh, looks like you don't have any activity to show. I'm not sure what activity would show up here, but I think I've pretty much explored, no pun intended, uh, what this actually does. Really cool website, neat idea. And yeah, that just seems like a cool thing. I feel like I'm missing something because I think it should show me something in my dashboard here for activity. Uh, but either way, being able to look up books, read them online, get recommendations is a very cool idea. Nice work on this project. All right, so I've got the third project in front of me here. This one is called Plane Explore. It's a website that helps you meet the aircraft world. It is by these two contributors right here. So let's go ahead and click into it and see what it looks like. All right, join the plain world or planes world, sorry, and then features. Let's click on features. And these are the three features it has. So take a look at the planes flying around the world, scan all planes that are nearby, find all future flights that match your settings. OK, let's click into globe exploration. Uh, nice. It's showing me a globe here. OK, that's kind of cool. Looks like it's loading or, or lagging. Can I can I move this around? OK, I can move it around and I can look at different planes and it shows me all of the planes flying above. That's kind of crazy when you see how many are, are going above at one point in time, like just constantly flights going on. OK, let's see what happens if I move this slider. Um, Can I can I move this? For some reason, I can't move this slider. OK, I got the slider to work now. I just cleared my cache, but this is just like really, really laggy, like to the point where like my computer is like literally lagging using this, even getting out of the tab. Uh, but it does seem to be working. I'm not really sure what this Earth hour is supposed to do. I think it just changes like the amount of light that's currently on Earth because it doesn't when I was moving it, it doesn't seem like the plants were moving at all. Uh, anyways, let's just go on to the next feature now because this one is just lagging my computer like crazy. Uh, scan nearby. OK, let's check this one out. I'm not going to get my location because I don't want you guys to know where that is. Uh, let's look at can I go to street maps style or let's change it to hybrid. Oh, that's cool. OK, so it changes the actual map style. Let's zoom out and let's find planes in this location within 100 kilometer radius. OK, zoom out and that's cool. OK, so it shows me the planes that are currently flying above and I can actually click on them. OK, that's neat. And I can see where it's coming from and where it's landing. OK, that's actually really cool. And I guess these guys are currently on the runway. And does it show me where it's going? Damn. OK, that's really cool. This is a cool feature. This is probably my favorite feature so far. Uh, let's make the radius larger. Let's go to like 
440 kilometers. Okay, I actually think, think it starts showing me them before I press find. And then when I press find, it just puts the radius up there. Uh, either way, that's fine. This guy shows me it's yeah, it shows me all the information. And then can I can I click more on this? Uh, no, okay, that's just showing it to me. Nice. Okay, that's really, really cool. This is a nice feature. Uh, let's go back to the streets map. And okay, yeah, it just, it just changes the thing. Very nice. Okay, let's go on to the next feature here, which is the find flights. All right, so right now we're looking for a flight from these two airports, which I don't know. I'm going to change them to ones that I do know. So let's look for one from YYZ to let's just go LAX, famous airport. Uh, let's change the date to be here. OK, currency can be US dollars and let's search. OK, it doesn't look like it's showing me anything. It's possible maybe there's not a flight going from here. Uh, what's the Vancouver airport? YV? Mm. Actually, I don't know what it's called. I'm trying to look for another Canadian airport. Uh, is there a Montreal airport? I don't know what any of the other airport codes are. Uh, let's go with just y, YVZ. I think that's one. See, so I feel like these should be updating here to tell me what these are, but it's not when I press search. So maybe this feature is just not working because it's not showing me anything. Uh, if this feature does work, someone let me know in the comments, but right now it doesn't seem like it is working. I'll change this one more time and see. OK, let's change this date to the 26 search. OK, yeah, I, I think this one's just not working, so I'm going to skip over this. OK, let's go to the about page. Uh, we have vote, Timothon, repo. OK, nice little animations here. Oh, that's cool. When I move my mouse, there's like a gradient that goes over it and then gives me a little explanation of how this works. Uh, web application, server configuration, front end development. Nice, nice, nice. And I think that's pretty much all I needed to look at here. Uh, I see an issue in bug. Can I report it? Oh, that's cool that they have these. Nice. OK, so I think that is Plain Explorer. Let's move on to the next project. All right, so I've got the fourth project in front of me here. Explore space like never before. I'm not actually sure what the name of it is because I don't think this is the name of the project. I think that's just the name of the repo. Uh, but it has an about page, explore our solar system and some of the most common star constellations in the web by your own hands. Nice. OK, let's click on the link here and let's see what this looks like. Actually, sorry, I want to first show the contributors of this. I want to try to do that for all of them. These are the three contributors, I believe, uh, although it says uh, I am. for. Oh, these are OK. That's information about all three of the contributors. Nice, nice, nice. OK, let's go back to the website and let's see what it looks like. All right, so I guess it is called uh, Pigo Des. Pigo Des. I I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. It doesn't really look like a word to me. Anyways, let's check it out here. Explore the solar system like never before. Features, solar system, constellations, and then it gives me the about the developers. Okay, so let's go to solar system. Okay, nice. Oh, wow. Okay, can I like zoom out of this? Jeez, this is cool. Okay, this is a lot more fluent than the, uh, than the other one. Wow, okay, and I can see planets. Can I like go towards them? Uh, looks like I can click on them. Oh, no, it just gives me the information about the planets. OK, that's really cool. Oh, can I move with the arrow keys or something? I feel like I should be able to move here. Um, I can't quite, but th that's fine. Nice. OK, this is neat. I can click on all of the planets and see information about them. Name, radius, distance from sun. It'd be nice if you guys had units here. Uh, I assume this is in kilometers, but uh, I'm not quite sure. Regardless. Nice and cool. OK, let's go back to the other features here. So let's go back. Let's check out constellations. All right. So this is the Ursa Minor, Ursa Major. If I click on it, oh, it brings me to the Wikipedia page. That's cool. Uh, is there anything else I can do here? Uh, looks like it's just showing me two names that I can click on. And it brings me to information about the constellations. Nice. OK, I think that's it. I mean, I might be missing something. No features is there about is down here. I guess that's it for this project. Nice work, guys. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so I've got the fifth project in front of me here. This one is called Airborne, and it is by Krishna Kanth. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. I probably am mispronouncing that. Uh, anyways, let's go to the website and let's check it out. All right, one mile at a time. Discover the best holiday spots in the world. Adventure awaits. Nice. Okay, let's go get your holiday spot. Also, I already created an account on this website. If you don't have an account, it tells you you need to make one when you first sign in. OK, so I can see a bunch of different places here. Uh, Rome, uh, Italy, Vacation City. Not sure exactly where that is. Sydney, Australia, London, England. Nice, nice, nice. 
Let's search for a place. Let's see what they have for Canada. Okay, uh, Niagara Falls, nice Banff, Whistler. Okay, those are the only three places. Uh, oh, this is a contact field. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, let's just go to Niagara Falls, learn more. And let's see, gives me a little description, gives me the weather, 20 degrees right now, sounds about right. And I guess this is where I would leave a review. Let's just say test, does this work? Question mark. Let's give it four stars. Uh, send a message. Um, oh, it does. Okay, nice. So it does actually show up there. Cool. Sweet. Let's go back to locations. Let's just look at another one here. Uh, let's favorite this. Favorite this. Let's go to New York City. Learn more. Okay. Looks like I can favor this one as well. Can I click on this hashtag? Yes. Okay, that's cool. So then it shows me all the other hashtags that have hashtag food. Very nice. All right. Let's go to profile. Tim's profile. This is a place that I visited. This is my search history and a few of my favorite places and then one of my reviews. And I guess I can delete it just by pressing X. Awesome. Nice website. Let's go to the contact page. Okay, just brings me down here to this form. And I guess that's about it. Awesome. Nice website. Looks really cool. Some great information there. And I like the fact that you can leave reviews and you have hashtags, just a lot of features on this website. So nice job. All right. So now it is time for me to talk to you about the top two projects that were hosted on Replit. All of these team members will be getting a free Replit hacker plan, as well as all the other projects that I've showed you that were in the top five. And uh, there'll be some prizes for these projects as well. All right, so the first best project that was hosted on Replit is the one I actually just showed you, which is Airbowl. So that makes my life a little bit easier. I'm not obviously going to go demo the project again, but they were the top project that was hosted on Replit. You can see that this is actually hosted on Replit as .repl.co, and you can look at all of the code directly on Replit if you go to the submissions page on the Timothon website. All right, the next best project that was hosted on Replit is Fact Explorer. So you can see, obviously, we're on Replit right now. And what this allows you to do is actually explore different facts. In Israel, it is legal to bring bears to the beach. OK, that, that's interesting. Uh, there is an uninhabited island in the Bahamas known as Pig Beach, which is populated entirely by swimming pigs. OK, these are kind of fun facts. 50% uh, of apartments in Los Angeles don't come with a fridge. Really? This is legal as fridges are considered an amenity and therefore landlords are not required to provide one. Damn, Mount Rushmore cost less than $1 million to construct, took 14 years to build from 1927 to 1941, and took 400 workers. Wow, okay, these are actually some pretty interesting facts. Oh, of course, this is what the About page is. I'm sure you guys are going to get a laugh from that. And this is by Cry Menzin. Uh, again, probably mispronouncing that, but nice work. You are the second winner for the top projects hosted on Replit. All right, so now what you guys have all been waiting for, the top three winners of the Code Jam. Before I get into those, I will quickly mention that all of these projects have been great. In fact, I looked at a lot of the other projects that weren't in the top five. You guys have done a great job. I hope you're going to compete in future Code Jams. And for any of you just watching, join the Discord server, take a look at the Code Jam, consider teaming up with someone. It's really a great opportunity to practice your skills. All right, so let me hop over to the other screen and I will show you the top three winning projects. All right, so coming in at third place for the fifth Tech with Tim Code Jam is, drum roll please, add some suspense in editors, Airborne. Airborne is number three. So the reason I picked this project for number three is I thought this was a good idea. This project is unique. I haven't really seen any other ones like this that are actually related to exploring different locations that you could go and visit. Everything worked. Everything was relatively polished. The UI looks pretty good. We have lots of lots of features like hashtags, learn more, visited, which I can click on. I have my profile that stores my favorite cities, my search history. I just thought overall it was a good job. Everything seemed to work. Well, that's one of the big things for me when I go on these projects. I want stuff to be intuitive. I want stuff to work. And I shouldn't have to read through your entire readme instructions to be able to navigate and use the website. So really good job. Congratulations. I'll put up the contributors on the screen for this project. Now I'm going to announce the second place project. So the second place project is drum roll, please. Solario or Solar I.O. This project was really well done. I'll just kind of go through it again and show you what it had. So it had the different planets here. You could click on them and get information about them and you can kind of scroll through them. You could look at a pretty basic simulation that shows you the orbits and relative speed 
of these planets. And then there was a game on here that you could play, right? So this kind of space shooter game won't go through it, but well done. Also had news about space, contact information. Everything was polished. Everything worked. Lots of feature features fit the theme very well. And the reason this got second over third was just because I thought it looked a little bit nicer, looked a little bit more professional. And, you know, it's my opinion, my bias. That's why I picked this for number two. All right. So coming in at first place, drum roll, please, is Books Explore. Now, I'm not going to lie. When I first opened this, I was a little bit underwhelmed because it seemed like there should be more features than I was looking at. But as I started actually looking through this website more when I wasn't recording, I noticed that there was a lot more that you can do with it. And you can see here that people actually just started following me. So that's why I was confused about the activity tab. I didn't realize like something like this could occur. And when I click on these people's profiles, you can see that it actually shows me all of their reviews, shows me the book that they reviewed. I can click on any recent books that they've looked at here, shows me all of the people they're following. I can scroll through all of their followers, their reviews. I can follow them like that. And now if I go over to explore, I can actually search for users as well. So this was a user that I'd found previously. If I go to users, you can see I can find him, click on him. And well, there's a lot more features to this than I originally thought. And I just really like this idea of kind of encouraging people to read, review books. Just seemed really cool. The account is working. I can click on my profile. I can see my little hashtag name. It just seemed like this was the most feature rich and looked like the most amount of work went into this project, at least for me. I also like the fact that I can read the book directly online. There's a lot of features here and more than I originally found. So I apologize during the demo. I didn't see all of this, but thank God I looked at it again because obviously that would change my decision on where this should be ranked. So congratulations, guys, on first place. Now, last thing I will say for these last two projects here, you guys did an awesome job. In fact, almost all of the projects I saw were really, really well done. Please don't be discouraged. You came fourth, fifth. Uh, the reason why these did not make it in the top three was just simple stuff like this, right? I feel like there should be an image here. Uh, this find flights feature didn't work. It was just didn't feel polished, didn't feel finished. And even though it might have had some more impressive features than some of the other projects, as soon as you throw something in there that doesn't work or is broken, that immediately kind of, you know, ruins the reputation of the project, if that makes any sense. And please take that as feedback. I'm not trying to diss or roast your project, just trying to help you improve for the future. Looking at this one here, this one was well done as well. I just thought it was pretty simple. Some of the other projects were a little bit more advanced, had some more work that went into them, and that's why I picked them. But regardless, you guys are saying you're only 14 years old. So congrats on that. That's really, really impressive, especially at that age. All right. So with that said, I think I'm going to end the video here. Those three winning teams and the top two projects hosted on Replit, as well as I guess the fourth and pl fifth place team because they're getting Replit hacker plans. I will reach out to you with information on how to claim your prize. That will be through Discord. Anyone who's watching this who wants to compete in future code jams, join the Discord server. There'll be announcements and all kinds of information there. You can ask the staff team, you can ask other members, and they'll tell you everything that you need to know. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Thanks to everyone for participating, and I will see you in another YouTube video.